Well, good morning and welcome to yet another episode of Elevensies. Um, astonishingly, we're up to number 45. Um, I can't believe I've actually done 45 of these shows. Um, now we've dropped down to two a week. It does give me a little bit more time in between to prepare. Um, what have we got for you today? Uh, well, we have a story about a biker being fined for riding hands off in Italy. Um, I will also give you an update about how logbooks are going to be uh, updated online. Um, we'll talk um, about green number plates for electric vehicles and uh, how Intermot has been cancelled. The TRL are giving away some uh, free stickers, uh, which are supposed to alert people if they're riding too close. Um, I'll tell you about the e-scooter trials, which have been brought forward and give you a heads up on those. A uh, technical item of uh, sort of, well, might be of interest, um, how to fit your own automatic clutch, which uh, is quite an interesting one. Uh, we'll also have a look at um, an, um, my uh, training and uh, how that's working. Um, and finally, uh, we'll have a look at um, tractors on the roads, and that'll be our better biking tip today. So stay tuned for that. That'll be at the end of the show. Um, if you've got any comments, any questions, any feedback, uh, anything you want to know about, uh, drop me a line and I'll try and deal with it. Um, I'll deal with live questions at the end of the show rather than um, uh, break into my stream of thought while I'm actually uh, presenting. So there'll be, I'll, be, I'll be answering stuff if you've got questions to ask. Um, Okay, anything else to say before we crack on? Um, no, okay, let's go over to the... Uh, first story let's just uh, set my screen share up again and uh, take me beautiful picture it is away <clears throat> have a look at that uh, snapshot there um, now that was a biker um, incident caught on a uh, traffic camera near uh, Chiam Chiampino I think it's pronounced my Italian isn't all that good um, yeah, you've probably done the same yourself. I've certainly taken my hands off both handlebars on occasion, and uh, maybe I might have impersonated an aeroplane. Who could say? Um, but uh, if you think you're doing it in Italy, uh, best to think again. The, the rider was snapped at uh, 127 kph when he ran through the camera there, um, which is uh, something just over somewhere over 70 miles an hour, if my maths is correct. Um, whatever the reason he had his hands off the bars, whether he was stretching or just enjoying the riding um, and the fact the bikes go in a straight line without the hands on the bars, it wasn't actually a wise decision just at that precise spot because the police um, released the photo and announced that the rider was not only fined a fairly whopping 560 euros, which is just over 500 pounds for that moment, um, but he also had his license suspended. Um, so I would um, have a think twice if you're going to do anything like that on your bike in Italy, particularly when you're a speed camera. Um, okay, so what else have we got in the news? Well, logbooks, uh, if you're V5C, if you want the technical term, uh, most of us will have to update that at some point or another, probably when we move, um, but uh, there are other reasons that might be needed updating. Um, um, formally, you've had to fill it in by hand, pop it in an envelope, uh, find a stamp and uh, drop down to a post box to get rid of it. And you can then wait, uh, according to the DVLA, up to six weeks for the replacement to arrive through the post. But now the DVLA have announced uh, that this is another service that they've brought online and you'll be able to do it in minutes rather than uh, days and weeks. Uh, working time should reduce to five days for the new logbook to be uh, returned to you. And it should take no more than two minutes uh, to, to do it as well, which is quite nice. All you actually need will be your uh, the, the existing vehicle registration number, the reference that's on the front of the uh, V5C, 
and your postcode and the rest will be done pretty much for you. And uh, to quote the DVLA Chief Executive Judy Leonard, she says, we're launching this service at a time when online services are becoming even more vital to help people get back on the road. Uh, the new online service is quicker and easier than sending your logbook to the DVLA. So if you've just moved home, try the service and see how simple it is. OK, great. Good one for customers. Um, but there's another benefit, of course, which isn't you. Um, it's the DVLA and particularly, of course, police who want to access records of who might own a vehicle. Um, they've just grabbed a number plate from. Now, just to give you an idea of how many vehicles are transferred, um, there were 1.4 million paper applications for a change of address on a vehicle last year so there's an awful lot of paperwork which needs to be shuffled around and you know we're not all uh, particularly good at um, keeping up with paperwork sometimes i happen to I vaguely remember actually suddenly realizing about a year after i'd moved i hadn't actually updated my log books so you know we all make uh, sort of oversights like that um so that'll be a lot easier and but um the it's all part of the DVLA's campaign to try to move more and more of their services online. And that probably has something to do with the coronavirus and uh, working from home as well. Um, OK, so don't forget, uh, you're watching Kevin Williams uh, live here with 11 years from Survival Skills. Um, what else have we got for you? Well, uh, as I said, we have a number of stories. Um, we will be looking at the trial of e-scooters. We'll be uh, explaining how you can have a, a friendly, a, a EV friendly number plate for your motorcycle soon. Um, how the e-trial, uh, e-scooter trials being brought forward and expanded, and you can get a, a free too close sticker from the TRL. Uh, so plenty to carry on with. Um, the Coronavirus, uh, yeah, okay, I've just mentioned it in connection with the online services that DVLA are, off, are, are offering, but um, there have been other knock-on effects, not least the cancellation of the UK's biggest motorcycle show, Motorcycle Live, at Birmingham. Um, but it's just been announced that the Intermot show, which is a huge, huge show that puts uh, the uh, Motorcycle Live one to shame, um, has also gone the way of the coronavirus and has been cancelled. Um, the press release states that uh, following extensive consultations and in coordination with the sponsor, the uh, German Motorcycle Industry Association has decided to suspend Intermot 2020. It was originally planned to go forward in October between the 6th and the 11th. And what they're working towards is a digital format for this show, which they hope to have prepared before the year's end um yeah so obviously the uh the, the challenges of putting a show like that together at the current time is is too much even for the biggest organizations um okay so um on with the show um green number plates for electric vehicles now um, actually whilst i was out and about training uh, on friday i actually spotted two electric motorcycles one was a proper motorcycle um, i didn't spot the make but i um i had to say that it was a fairly hideous sort of 1960s kitchen appliance cream color ghastly looking color but uh, hey ho and it seems to be back in fashion um the other was a fairly bog standard looking scooter which i uh, again sat next to us at the traffic lights and i looked at a little bit closer and realized that uh, there wasn't a petrol engine attached to it it was actually an electric scooter and that was being used for food deliveries actually the um which is interesting because it's a you know an, an application which you might wonder whether the uh, battery life would be up to it but uh, obviously somebody's using it for uh, food deliveries um but should you want to ensure that you don't need a slightly geeky e-bike spotter like me to recognize what you're riding and to understand its uh, pollution busting credentials the plans are afoot to let you display a special number plate so everyone can tell um earlier this year the government actually consulted on the uh, introduction of green number plates to identify zero emission vehicles 
And it's now been announced that these plans are likely to be introduced in the autumn and the actual implementation date will be subject to parliamentary time because they need to amend legislation. These plates won't be mandatory, uh, so you can just you can just have an ordinary plate on your bike, and no doubt somebody will charge you a little bit extra for the green one if you want it. And you can fit them to new or existing uh, electric power two wheelers, but you can only fit them to zero emission vehicles. So they won't they are not uh, to be fitted to a hybrid, for example. Um, this uh, green badge of honour will sit where the normal country marker is found on number plates. And uh, you can still put your GB if you want it over the green background if you wanted to prove where you've come from. Um, okay, so um, what else is in the news? Well, uh, TRL, um, they're distributing some free stickers. Um, now, I was going to show a picture of those, but I seem to have forgotten to put it up, so never mind. Um, but basically what they are is um, a series of numbers at different uh, sizes. And the theory is that um, you will be able to read each number at a distance when you are a bit too close. So it'll say, you know, too close, uh, 30 miles an hour, and then slightly bigger will be 50, and then much bigger will be 70. And the idea is that uh, they're, they're going to look at the effectiveness of these stickers to see whether they actually affect following driver behaviour. Um, so you can order some of these if you want to, to fix your vehicle. Um, they're 19 centimetres by 47 centimetres. So what they're saying is they need to be either vans or lorries. Um, but uh, I can't see why I wouldn't fit a car personally, um, but uh, anyway, the the idea is that um, if you want to fit them, the relevant text is it says readable only to drivers who've left a gap of less than three seconds between themselves and the vehicle displaying the decal. Uh, for example, if the driver is driving at fifty and able to read to fifty, they are obviously too close. If they've left a following distance, which is safe which is defined as a three-second gap, not a two-second gap, incidentally, they'll be able to read, they'll not be able to read the 50. Ditto at 30 and 70. Um, if you want to get hold of any of these stickers, uh, there is an email address, which I have already popped up for you on the comment stream. Um, okay, so don't forget, uh, you are watching Survival Skills here, Kevin Williams, and I am giving you, presenting the... Uh, live 11th is webcast which runs every Wednesday and Sunday at 11 o'clock and you can catch up here on Facebook if you missed the live show you can catch up on YouTube on my YouTube channel which is just going across the screen now but don't forget it's got a UK on the end of survival skills or you can follow it on Twitter Facebook um, LinkedIn and even my coffee page uh, so plenty of places to follow me if you've missed out on a live show. Right, okay, so what else have we got? Um, well, the e-scooter trials are being brought forward. Now, I have mentioned these uh, on a previous show. I've actually written about them on the website as well. Um, more and more people are going to need to travel to work, um, but there is a need to keep numbers down on public transport. Um, to maintain some kind of social distancing. So what the government are looking towards is bringing forward a trial of e-scooter rental schemes, possibly as early as the soon as the, as the end of this month. Um, this is all part of a year-long scheme, uh, which is investing two billion in greener travel. Now, as I'm sure you know, e-scooters are the small uh, two-wheeled stand-on devices but they're powered by a small electric motor rather than by your foot as we probably did when we were kids uh, a lot of them will loathe them scooter sharing schemes are now widespread they're found in at least 100 cities around the world uh, san francisco paris copenhagen all have them um, i know when i was uh, discussing um, things in new zealand and um, they were just getting going out there uh, when I was on Shiny Side Up um, in 2019. And were. The system will work in the same way as the cycle hire. Uh, basically, you'll release this, this scooter with a smartphone app and then it will charge you to ride it. Uh, or you can buy them. Now, the current models on sale in the UK cost anything from £100 to more than 1000 for the most sophisticated models. 
But there's just one hitch at the moment. You cannot ride any of these vehicles anywhere other than on private properties. They're actually classed as personal light electric vehicles, PLEVs in the hideous acronym. Um, the same requirement uh, for any motor vehicle applies to personal light electric vehicles. They have to be subject to type approval. Um, and that means basically, as these things do not have any uh, lights that have been approved, they have no number plate, they have no mirrors, they have no signaling ability, they have no horn, um, they can't actually be used legally on the road. So um, even though they're not road legal, if you do ride one on the road, uh, a cycle lane or a pavement, you are committing a string of motoring offences, including MOT and tax and so on. So you could get a £300 fixed penalty fine for using one of these and six points on a driving licence. Now, rather bizarrely, um, a normal scooter, that is one that's not propelled by an engine, is perfectly legal to use on the road, just like a bicycle. Uh, but you cannot use one on pavements or on cycle paths. So the current law is uh, something of a mess because you can use an electric bicycle, which is e obviously powered uh, on anywhere where you can ride a cycle. So uh, the, uh, the idea is to try and harmonise the rules so the e-scooters are the same rules apply to a scooter. Um, so the regulatory framework needs a shift and the idea is that the uh, the trial plan will see these scooters rolled out um, across England, Wales and Scotland and then they can be legally used within the set geographical boundaries for the trial. Um, but it would still be illegal for you to use your own e-scooter on a public road even if you're within the trial area. It has to be one of the licensed trial vehicles. Okay, now obviously one of the problems with these things is there is some significant, significant concern about whether they're safe or not. Um, a television presenter, a woman called Emily Hartridge, was the first person to be killed in an accident involving an electric scooter. And she was killed, I think, if I remember correctly, at the Elephant and Castle in London, which is a particularly busy and unpleasant junction. And so there are many safety questions. Um, although to be honest, you know, it's hard to see that the rider is any more exposed than a, a cyclist in traffic. But there are consider, you know, things to think about, which include the speed of these vehicles, um, their wheels in particular, and brakes. Um, and the trial will obviously have to define the standard. Now, current models that you can buy off the shelf, some of them can do over 30 miles an hour. Um, others are limited to 15.5, and I suspect that is to fall in line with uh, legislation in other countries. Um, some e-scooters have only a single brake as well, which uh, obviously makes stopping a bit more of an issue than twin brakes. Um, some have tail lights, many don't. Um, but, you know, obviously one concern that I would have is that the tiny nature of the wheels makes them particularly susceptible to road irregularities if you're driving them actually on the road. Um, who is pushing for legislating these things and making them legal? Well, one of the uh, bodies is actually the London Cycle Campaign, because what they're saying is that they are a low carbon alternative to cars and buses for those who can't or don't want to cycle. Um, although you have to argue that, um, you know, riding one of these is probably technically a bit more difficult in some ways than uh, actually riding a much bigger wheeled bicycle with an electric engine. But anyway, the LCC is calling for these things to be legalised and allowed on cycle tracks, it says, rather than used on pavements. So the idea is keep them off pavements, but onto dedicated lanes. Um, however, there seems to be a bit of a flaw in the thinking uh, here. It, the, under the plan for the trial, these e-bikes uh, can only be used by somebody with a driving licence, maybe just a provisional one. Um, and you would also need insurance, although under the trial system, that would be provided by the hire company. Um, so uh, there's a, obviously an issue here where you can ride an electric bicycle with no tax, no insurance, no MOT, no license, but somehow the e-scooter falls into a completely separate category where you don't need an MOT, but you do need insurance, you do need a license. So I'm not quite sure um, how the regulatory system actually makes things simpler rather than more complicated, but hey-ho. 
Um, we'll see how the trial goes first. Um, initially, just four places were chosen for this trial, West Midlands, Portsmouth and Southampton, uh, Bath, Bristol and surrounding areas, and Derby and Nottingham. But it seems that with the coronavirus giving the whole system uh, scheme a kick up the backside, um, the scheme will be widened to the whole of Great Britain, including um, the Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. At the moment, it's not clear exactly where the trials will be. Um, I've actually included Northern Ireland, haven't I? It's actually the United Kingdom. Um, so I'm not sure if that they're in part of it or not, but certainly Wales and Scotland are. Okay, so uh, don't forget, um, you're watching the Evansies with Kevin Williams here. Uh, I'll be looking at tractors on the road and giving you some tips on riding safely around tractors in just a moment. Um, if you're still locked down, still furloughed, and there are a few people, my upstairs neighbour, who's a, uh, a chef, is still uh, furloughed and um, not doing his normal commute back to and forth for work on his bike. If you want to read something about biking, you can check out my range of books over at uh, Lulu. There's the address going past on the screen. Um, okay, so an um, interesting technical one here. Um, I didn't, didn't, I'll put the link up for you in a minute. But this is all about fitting your own automatic clutch. Now, um, the idea is not an automatic gearbox in the way that uh, something like the NC series of Hondas has, or even the sort of very matic kind of uh, gearbox that scooters come with. Um, this is actually an auto clutch. And the idea is that as the engine speed spins up, the uh, centrifugal force, um, and I, yes, I know it doesn't really exist, but we'll call it centrifugal force, engages and disengages a clutch via RPM. So basically, as you rev the engine, the bike's clutch will start to bite and the machine will start to pull away. So the claims are that uh, obviously you get less fatigue in your left hand from the clutch and it claims to uh, provide you with a precise throttle control, maximum traction and the confidence to maneuver any obstacle on track, trail or road. Um, Okay, the uh, the actual clutch itself is optimised, obviously, for each individual bike model, um, but they are tunable. There are various different spring rates within the sides of this, and there, uh, and there are wedges as well, which you put inside, so that you can tune the clutch performance so that some will you can uh, get it to engage just off the tick over or others you, know, you can get it to engage when you've actually got a bit more revs on the thing um interestingly the clutch is still fully available to you to use so you can override the auto technology at any time just pull the clutch in and they're very proud to tell tell us that we can pull wheelies if we want to just by the normal way revving the engine with the clutch in and then letting the clutch out like normal and the front tire will rise um okay uh the have more fun they say because you won't need about worry about stalling um i have never heard of this system before so it was a brand new one to me when somebody dropped me a line with it um I suppose in the in the US, where uh, for car drivers shifting to a bike, uh, deciphering uh, the use of a clutch is akin to understanding the Dead Sea Scrolls, there's probably quite a potential market for it because it would be more in line with what the average mo uh, new motorcycle rider would be ready to use from their car experience. But um, it is an interesting one. You know, if it's uh, such a great idea, why aren't manufacturers putting something like this on their bike themselves so you still are um, you're using it for pulling away and stopping according to the advice on the website and you should still use the clutch they say for shifting anyway um i looked one up um i checked how much one for the tracer 900 i rode in new zealand uh, 2019 would cost and it would be 700 dollars more or less and um the Obviously, you also have to fit the clutch on top of that. So there'll be labor charges if you're not capable of doing that yourself. Um, I can see that being useful for some riders. If you, for some reason, have problems with your left hand, um, then, you know, maybe it's something you can think about. But, uh, you know, for a mainstream use, I think it's probably still uh, a, a sort of a, a toy rather than a, a really useful piece of kit. Right. OK. Um, 
what have we got for you just coming up to the last item now better biking think tractor uh, let's just set the screen share up again and uh, roll this on yeah okay so tractors now this still clip here is taken from a video that uh, i created for facebook the other day uh, for my uh, ride for fun courses um and i was out on some roads in essex uh, uh, when i shot this video i think it was last spring actually and what put this in my mind was a story that popped into my news feed after wednesday's show and basically what it was a report of yet another motorcycle crash with a rider sustaining serious injuries after it hit a tractor in East Devon on Tuesday evening. Uh, the incident happened on the outskirts of Honiton, which is, um, if you know it, it's um, a sort of rural area, around four, uh, five, five fifty in the evening. And uh, the, as usual, the uh, precise nature of the incident was under investigation and that's probably the last that we will ever hear of it and that means we won't learn anything from this incident so let's see what i can teach you about tractors uh, now they're a hazard on the road and uh, but all too often riders are caught out by finding a tractor now this is an, a great little story and and i've probably told it to you before but uh, i'll just go over it again um some years ago, one of the motorcycle forums I was on, there was an incandescent rant by a rider who had, um, yeah, insert your favourite expletive, a uh, tractor driver had pulled out in front of him and forced him to lay the bike down. Now, uh, on a pre-ABS bike, laying the bike down is a euphemism for I grabbed a big handful of front brake, locked the front tyre and fell off. Uh, in this case, he was lucky. Um, he missed everything, didn't hit anything hard and just slid to a halt. And his bike actually slid under the trailer as well, between the wheels and under the trailer. So damage was reasonably minimal for a fairly high speed crash. Um, so anyway, uh, some further questioning went on and it turned out that what had actually happened was he'd, he topped a blind crest. And as he came over the top, what he'd found was the tractor was already halfway across the road in front of him. So it was um, politely pointed out to him that therefore the tractor driver couldn't have seen him coming. Um, so it was hardly the tractor driver's fault for not looking properly. His response to that was actually quite remarkable. He said he was following his two mates and the tractor driver should have guessed that there was another bike coming along any moment. Um, so I'll, I'll leave you to figure out the logic in that thinking, but uh, clearly tractor drivers have to be psychic as well as competent on the road. Um, so let's just spend a few minutes thinking about tractors. Now, if you've seen the uh, the Ride for Fun video I put up on Facebook earlier this week, um, it's now up on YouTube and I'll pop, pop the link up for you in a minute. Uh, you'll see me riding these lovely Essex roads on a beautiful sunny day. They are just the kind of roads and those are just the kind of conditions where it's very easy to put the hammer down. The roads are faster flowing, the weather conditions were fantastic uh, and the roads themselves are full of hidden traps that catch out the unwary. Um, they're not just great training routes for me to use, they are some of the best biking roads in the south of England and they're some of the most dangerous. Um, the video, which I popped up, is uh, just three minutes long. Um, the actual ride itself is about five minutes. I've sped up the bits where nothing um, between hazards. Um, but in that uh, short ride, there are no fewer than three tractors. Um, one is pulling out from behind the hedge. Uh, that's the one that I've shown you there. Another one is coming towards me on the other side of the road. There it is. And those two are actually just quite close to each other. And then the third one, just a couple of minutes later on the same video, uh, is on my side of the road and I needed to overtake it. So three different tractors and all setting up a different problem. The emerging tractor, the oncoming tractor, what's the risk there? Well, possibly vehicles overtaking it. And then finally, the tractor that I had to overtake because it was going in my direction. So what clues would help us um, think tractor on the road as we ride? Well, the first and most obvious one is think about the kind of farming that's going on around you. Just have a look in the fields. If you can see lots of crops growing, wheat, 
um, maybe cabbages if you like, um, broad beans, uh, you know, whatever it is, if it's arable crop, it needs a tractor to plough the field, it needs a tractor to plant the seed, it will need a tractor to go over it and uh, spray the crop with pesticide and herbicide at some point, unless it's a green farm of course, and it'll probably need a tractor to process the crop, um, maybe a combine harvester in the case of uh, one of the grains, and at the end of the season it will need a tractor to plough it all back up again and uh, harrow it and leave it for the winter. So there are particular types of fields which will tell us tractors are going to be around and there are particular activities that we could see going on in the fields where we can anticipate a tractor. I took a guy out last year um, up in uh, Derby area and we did day out on some lovely winding roads over some beautiful um, agricultural land and I stopped somewhere and I said um, how do you know there's a tractor ahead and he looked around and sort of looked a bit blank and he said no idea how do we know there's a tractor ahead and I said look at the field over there it's, uh, it's covered in seagulls that means it's just been ploughed and there's a significant chance that we may meet the tractor itself uh, moving on the road between fields. And uh, as we set off, what should come around the corner with the tractor with the plough on the back of it? You know, those are the kind of pieces of information that are easy to see, but hard to think about um, unless we actually know the connection between seagulls and a freshly ploughed field and a tractor. If you're up in the moorlands, and uh, you're surrounded by sheep or you're down in the lowlands and you're surrounded by cows the chances of finding a tractor are relatively lower doesn't mean there'll be no farm vehicles but you're not so likely to find a tractor so have a think about the farming area um so what do we do well one thing is not go around blind corners too fast um we need to slow down and look for clues uh, time of year, I've already mentioned that. There are particular kinds of uh, activities that go on particular time of year. Um, in about a month's time, the grain will be ripening and we're liable to meet um, tractors towing grain laden wagons. I think if you look at this second picture that I showed you, that one there, you can see the straw bales on the back. Um, we're also liable to meet combines, of course, coming the other way, which take up quite a lot of room on the road. Um, so think about what's going on. If there's a tractor going one way with a laden uh, truck on the back of it like that, there's likely to be an empty one going the other way. Um, think about views as well. Um, can the tractor driver see you? Well, I mentioned that incident with the guy flying over the blind crest. Um, the tractor driver couldn't see him because there was a, a, a hill in the way. Um, I had a near, well, not, I wouldn't say near miss because I saw it coming, but I had an incident where a tractor driver pulled right out in front of me. And if I hadn't seen the tractor, and if I'd been going around the blind corner too quick, I would have ridden straight into the side of the tractor. But what I spotted over the top of the hedge was the sort of the spiky thing that's used to lift a big bale. And uh, I saw that over the top of the hedge, and I could equally well see that I couldn't see the driver in that uh, cab. So I slowed right down, came around the corner really cautiously, much more cautious than normal, in fact, just as the tractor pulled straight out in front of me. Um, that exit to that field was on a 70, 80 mile per hour left hand kink. If I'd ridden that according to the view around the bend and not the lack of view on the inside, then I wouldn't be here to tell you about that. And that, But that's how a lot of riders will see that corner. They will see the empty road in front of them and not remember that there is a surprise horizon that the tractor can pull out in front of. Um, maybe the hedge should have been cut down. Maybe the farmer should shut that gate and put a new one in where he can see better. Whatever. Um, the, the, he hasn't done that, and I have to deal with the problem. And that means using my eyes, my wits, to see the situation and to realise that the driver of the tractor is not going to know I'm there. I'm the only one who can deal with that situation who uh, before it gets messy. And that's how, basically, we have to ride the road. We can't absolve responsibility onto the other fellow. We have to take it on the chin and do it ourselves. 
So next time you have any kind of a scary moment on a road, um, have a think to yourself, what can you have done differently? Next time you are riding a road like this, start thinking about where tractors may be, where they're coming out of uh, blind entrances, whether they're coming towards you, and that means a risk from oncoming vehicles overtaking, very often a motorcycle, and whether or not you're going to be able to overtake a slow-moving tractor yourself safely. Think what can you do differently if something goes wrong? And that's the route to safer biking. Um, so, okay. Um, hopefully that's given you a few things to think about. Um, so I'm going to call it quits here. We've done our 30-odd our, our minutes. Um, as I say, don't forget that if you have enjoyed the show, you can head over to my coffee page there. There's the address for that. You'll find lots more um, items on safer riding, well over 100, which you can access uh, for £3, price for coffee, give you 30 days access. Or for a subscription, you can access all that content and more besides, uh, basically the content of my um, performance bend course um but yeah do think about um coming along and uh, doing a course at some point i've got the back to biking courses up and running and i'm using a mix of online training now and on road training um, and first courses i've actually run the first courses and it's worked um, better than i could have expected actually um, the guy who commented yesterday said that the, the online debrief that we did uh, in fact, it was better than the training course that he'd done on road because he had time to think about it. He was fresh when we came back to do the debrief. He'd had time to think about questions that he wanted to ask. And I was able to go into more depth because there was no rush for everybody to get home. You know, he wasn't tired. We didn't have to get back. So there are actually real benefits to doing things online, which I have to admit, I actually considered when I set them up. So do come along and have a look at uh, the coffee page. Come along and have a look at the website and think about getting back to biking uh, over the next few months with survival skills. All right. OK, thank you very much. Don't forget, I will be back with the next episode of 11 Zs on Wednesday when I'll be bringing you more topical news and controversial views and some better biking tips. But uh, for now, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you soon on the next one. Bye-bye.